Good afternoon, Kitchissippi. It is Saturday, November the 26th. This is a video version of the 326th Kitchissippi Ward newsletter. Uh, these have been on pause for a few years, but I'm very pleased to resume them. It was a very busy newsletter, lots to uh, read in there, and we'll jump right in. First on the list is a new proposal for a 25-story tower that is proposed to be built by the owner at Island Park Towers. So the civic address on that one is 210 Clearview. It would be built in the surface parking lot that is immediately to the west of the existing tower at 25 stories going in that surface parking lot. My staff and I have organized an open house. We'll have the developer in to answer your questions about that proposal as it goes through the rezoning phase and that open house is planned online on December the 15th. I've got pop-up office hours coming. Uh, it's good to resume those in person. We've had uh, several months of them now as I switch back and forth between the uh, online Zoom and around the coffee shops as I normally do. My next ones are going to be held on Thursday. That's December the 1st from uh, noon until 3 p.m. Come on in. No appointment needed during those hours. Just uh, drop by to chat with me one-on-one -on -one about whatever is on your mind. Really important, uh, many of you will have received your letter this week from the city with respect to making a declaration related to the vacant unit property tax. City Council has enacted a new vacant unit tax that will be applied to empty residential properties. In, starting in January, residents will need to make a declaration to the city with respect to the residential properties that they own and declare whether or not those are occupied or whether they are empty. Empty. This week, many people received a letter, I hope uh, most of you did, that describes the process, uh, then the information that you'll need in order to make that declaration to the city with respect to the vacant unit tax. Remember, the declaration doesn't start until January, but the city is getting everyone prepped with the information that you need. Uh, there are a number of applications on the Committee of Adjustment agenda that is on December the 7th. Uh, at 7 and 9 Gwyn, the owners are seeking variances to permit a reduced lot width and area in order to construct a semi-detached building. At 927 Wellington, that's the site of the uh, Cooper Tools, the owners are seeking a variance to the zoning to permit a heavy equipment and uh, vehicle sales, rental and servicing use at the site. Uh, this this is the existing Cooper rental site and uh, I imagine that the committee will normalize that current use. At 16 Lowry, the owner is seeking to convert the existing three-unit apartment into a four-unit apartment building with a basement unit. The, uh, this is the triplex that is already constructed. By going from a triplex to a four-unit or a, um, a low-rise apartment building, uh, many of the performance standards are not met, so the owner is seeking the variances that would allow them uh, to convert that. At 307 Picton, uh, the owner is seeking to convert the existing dwelling to a low-rise apartment building with multiple variances sought. Uh, this application was adjourned from the hearing on October the 19th. At 260 Armstrong, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing triplex, that's right around the corner from me here, and build a low-rise apartment building. They're seeking multiple variances from the zoning. Uh, on the November 2nd meeting, uh, there was an application for 432 Ravenhill that was adjourned and will be heard at the next C of A meeting. It's a proposed severance and construction of three singles that would require a number of variances. And adjourned from the November 16th meeting, the committee is going to resume hearing an application at 608 Tweedsmuir for uh, variances related to interior side yard setbacks, front facing garages, and increased building height to build a two-story semi at that address at 608 uh, Tweedsmuir. Uh, this week I also received the decisions from the November the 16th hearing. At 52 Huron, a variance was granted to permit a front-facing garage. At 284 Churchill, the owner was originally refused a variance. I believe that was about a year or so ago in order to uh, construct there. They took that to the Ontario Land Tribunal, but in the meantime revised the proposal 
Council and came back to the Committee of Adjustment uh, with plans to demolish the existing detached dwelling to build a semi. Uh, the owner was seeking variances associated with uh, lot width and area. The Committee of Adjustment determined that the changes are not so um, uh, significant as to do an entirely new hearing and they have refused these variances as well. And at 284 Dover Court, uh, the committee has approved a variance to allow the height of the building to be 8.2 meters instead of 8 meters. This is a building that was already constructed. There's a he said, she said around um, mistakes made on the grading plan. The building is 200 centimeters higher than it is allowed to be by the zoning. The committee approved the variance that normalizes uh, the existing construction. Uh, we've got some other open houses and, uh, 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 sorry, open houses and uh, rezonings. At Winona, there is an open house. Uh, we've set a date for the online open house to build a six-story mid uh, mixed-use building at 377 and 381 Winona Avenue at Picton. Uh, that meeting is going to be held online on December the 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, I did a, a, a webinar with Councillor Gower on Wednesday night taking a look at Bill 23. We brought a number of experts in with us to answer some of your questions about what Bill 23 would mean. It's a wide-ranging bill that affects virtually every aspect of city planning right across Ontario. That video is now online. We recorded it uh, and in the newsletter you'll find a link in order to be able to view that in its entirety. It's a little over two hours. It was a great discussion and I want to thank uh, Councillor Gower very much for co-hosting that with me. Uh, last minute uh, notice from Claridge that their proposal or their building at 1040 Somerset, that's where the, um, uh, the Compu Center was next to the O-Train tracks, they had put that project on uh, mothballs uh, because of the, uh, the financing wasn't able to be worked. They've turned that building into a purpose-built rental project. They've done some pencil sharpening. They're now able to make the finances work and that building is going to start construction. It's going to start construction on Monday, so extremely short notice. I'm going to get out there on Monday and just uh, take a look at how the site is evolving uh, with uh, I think everyone's prime consideration being the safety of the kids who are walking to and from Devonshire. At 375 Byron, that is the uh, choice real estate development that's at the corner of Kirkwood and um, uh, Richmond and Byron, the six-story building that has been going up for, uh, I guess, a couple of years now. Uh, as part of that development, they were going to give the city uh, a piece of parkland, so convey some of that property. Uh, while I was on holidays, they opened, or sorry, not holidays, during the election, uh, they opened up a consultation on uh, what that park should be programmed as, how it should be configured. Um, with the election now over, I'm getting a little bit more hands-on to that file. The comments deadline has been extended until December 5th. You can see all the information that the city has put online. Follow the link that's in the newsletter. And Ashcroft has resubmitted its site plan for the convent building. Uh, you know, we've been through this one uh, a million times before. Uh, they have a rezoning. They're going to repair the heritage building. Uh, there is a, an approved zoning for uh, what that building will look like. The previous site plan approval has uh, expired. Uh, they've resubmitted the site plan. I've taken a good look at the design brief. All the documents are online. There are at best some uh, cosmetic changes, but otherwise this is largely the same um, uh, proposal that has previously approved, uh, received its site plan. So that will be moving forward as well. Uh, around the community, there is lots happening. The folks who run in the cold at uh, Park United Church, which is a, a communal meal. There is food that can be, um, uh, sorry, there is a meal, there's music, there's uh, company. Uh, they just want to make sure that everyone is invited to attend that communal meal. It's held at the Parkdale United Church every Saturday. The doors open at 2.30 p.m. Meals are served from 3.30 until 5. Come on in for hot chocolate to eat together, coffee, tea, uh, there's a magazine table, crafts, the meals are served to the table, uh, prepared by their chef Ian Harrington. It's always a, a good meal to be had there. Everyone is invited. Uh, the Parkdale Market, which is right behind me, is hosting a night market. Their, uh, the holiday night market at Parkdale will be this Wednesday, December 7th, from 4 until 8 
p.m. There will be local artisans, food vendors, live entertainment, mulled wine, and hot drinks. Visit the event's uh, Facebook page. You can find the link in the, um, uh, the newsletter. And as I'm uh, doing this, I'm listening to the sound of chainsaws as they sell lots and lots of Christmas trees here at the Parkdale Market. Uh, Westboro Beach uh, on Sunday. I don't know if I'll have this video online in time, but their annual uh, Santa Claus parade for the food bank is going to be making its way through the neighborhood. Uh, visit the uh, link that I've put in the newsletter to see its exact route, and they are accepting donations of uh, non-perishable food. Hilson Avenue Public School is uh, offering or uh, hosting an online silent auction uh, in order to raise funds for its schoolyard redevelopment that runs from December 5th until December 10th. I have a link in the newsletter with uh, um, uh, how to participate in that auction. Uh, the, uh, the last one was very well supported by the community and I'm sure that Kitchissippi is going to uh, support this one uh, equally well. And uh, Fisher Park will have a uh, pop-up uh, Christmas market. It's going to be held on December the 3rd at Fisher Park School. That'll be from 9 until 3. Handmade items, gourmet foods, uh, it is definitely craft time time of year. City Hall is beginning to resume its normal course. A couple of meetings that are coming up this week um, uh, along those lines. The Police Services Board, on which I sit, is going to meet on Monday at 4 p.m. at City Hall. It has a fairly lengthy agenda that is mostly administrative items, but there will be the introduction of the uh, Human Rights and Racial Profiling Report, which I know many of you will be very interested to take a look at, as well as its Q3 2022 performance report. Uh, I will note that this will be the first police services board at which Mayor Sutcliffe will take his seat. Uh, I am glad that the mayor is going to be taking his seat on that board. Our previous one didn't, but I believe it's important to have that uh, interface between city council and uh, the police services uh, at the very highest level. And then, of course, on Wednesday, city council meets uh, starting at 10 a.m. The agenda has gone online. It's largely going to be related to a uh, tabling of the governance report. The governance report is how um, City Hall tweaks its rules of procedure, uh, of, of how we conduct the business of city government. It's always tweaked a little bit at the beginning of each term of council. That report will be tabled at Wednesday's meeting, and I expect that we will have a fair bit of discussion as well about the aforementioned Bill 23. Uh, really interesting, uh, of course, uh, during that uh, City Hall, or sorry, that City Council meeting, uh, there will be the introduction. The province will drop at 11 a.m. its LRT inquiry report. Report. So I would expect to see councillors uh, looking at their phones as surreptitiously as they can to see what that inquiry says, uh, hopefully to be in a position to respond to it fairly quickly. Kitchissippi, it has been a pleasure resuming the video newsletter, this one for newsletter number 326. I wish you all an excellent week.